which is awesome. A lot of people always talk about the tight end group and you know, that position. Is, what are your thoughts about the performance when they did this past weekend? I thought they were very productive. You know, the ball found almost every one of them multiple times, right? So it's just what's been going on in practice every day. So you hope that when you go play the game, the ball gets distributed like it has been in practice. And so to me, that's the key is from like people, I guess balance is the word that people use. I don't, balance to me is like everybody touching the ball, you know, and so, but, you know, I think that's a testament to the cam because of the way he views the game. The defense dictates a lot of times where the ball goes, right? And so, you know, he's, he distributes the ball with them. Coach, after eight months in this league, you, you know what you have, I guess, but you don't really know until somebody lies on the other side. Yeah. Of the game. What was the one or two things that you learned that you didn't know about that group before? Well, I, I mean, I think I knew it, but you hope that it shines through in real time is that they're resilient. You know, I mean, they don't let bad things affect them. There's been multiple times, and look, we put them through some stuff at practice to where we knew the challenge going into that game, and they were ready, we were prepared for every facet of the challenge. And you see in practice that, you know, certain things happen and we just go move on to the next play. You know, I mean, there's bad things that happen, we move on to the next play. And so you hope that that, because that is really the key to success, is like just moving on to the next play. And if you let a bad play affect you, then that's when the game starts, you know, rolling on you a little bit, you know. Which, one of the negatives in the game was the pick, right? But, one of the extreme positives in the game after was the fact that the pick did not bother us. We just went over there and we watched it and everybody talked, made corrections, and our defense went out there and what a job to hold them to a field goal, right? That was key in the beginning of that game. So very complimentary football by those guys, but we also did not let that affect us. We just went out and kept playing ball, which is what you have to do. Shannon, obviously, uh, you've been working with Cam with for eight, nine months now, but to see him and call plays for him in the game, what was that like for you? What was that, the whole experience of, of his first game like for you? And, you know, the, the, the just... It was calm. It was, I mean, he's comfortable out there, you can tell. You know, and so, you know, he does a really good job of protecting plays when the play isn't there you know, and extending the play. And that's the one thing, because at practice, whistles get blown. You don't really get to see the extensions of plays a lot of practice, you know. So, in the game, it's different because you got to get them down, you know. And so, he did do a good job of extending plays in certain times. And there was, there was two or three times where, you know, he extended plays right there on the part of the field where it might have took us out of field goal range. But he threw it away twice, and one he threw it to Jacoby in the back of the end zone. And so, you know, th that ability to just, just to create some space and let the play develop is, is crucial in my opinion. How long did it take you to get comfortable with, with that style? And that he will drop back 35 yards. <laughs> no, it, I mean, easy. You know, that, that makes my job easier because I don't have to worry about calling a perfect play or anything. Just, you know, if it isn't there, then he'll, he'll keep it alive. But did you, I mean, everyone knew what he was capable of. Here. But I guess as as the play caller, did you did you need any time to get your no. this, this kid just does things a little bit different? Yeah, let him play ball, man. Yeah. Because yeah. with the offensive line being playing as well as they gave him almost as much time as he needed to play. Yeah, I mean I think that's the that's the key part of our offense, you know, is the fact that, you know, there isn't a lot of pressure, you know. There just isn't. And honestly, it was a key part of recruiting him. You know, one of the bigger reasons he's here is because of those guys up front. And so they did a heck of a job. I thought they did an unbelievable job in the run game. I mean, they're big up front. And we got some bloody yards in the run game, which was, it kept us in phase, you know, as far as just, you know, methodically moving the ball down the field at times, you know. I thought our run game was very productive uh, with, with what we were going against. Hey, Coach, I want to delve into your quarterback room a little bit. We know what Cam brings to the table, but do you think that he's also doing a good job mentoring the second and third string quarterback? And what are they drawing off of him as he goes on? We know you have a good quarterback, but you never know when they'll be called upon at some point if needed. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, people talk about mentorship, and that's fine. It's a good word to throw around, but the, it's not like it's on them, too, to learn, right? right. It's not just on him to teach. You know, it's everybody in the room is watching and, and listening to the same things. And so I think people are paying attention 
to the way he goes about business every day and the way he interacts with his teammates and the way he practices and the way he plays. And I think that that is rubbing off on them. Uh, I don't necessarily put that all on him. Though. I put that mostly on them. You know, you got X amount of time to watch a kid that plays at a high level. I would take advantage of it if I was you. Have you ever installed an offense this diverse in terms of formations and, and personnel groupings? Um, you know, it's kind of, it's what we've evolved to over the past probably eight years, I would say. You know, I mean, it just keeps evolving. I think it helps when, when you have a tight end room that you really don't really care where they line up at. I think that's crucial, you know, because we can be in 12 personnel, 13 or 14, but we might line up in two by two or three by one. It might be the single receiver. They could be the slot. And so to me, you know, having the ability just to call a formation regardless of the personnel and, and not worry about where people are, you know, because if the ball goes to them, fine, you know, that's great. And I don't really dictate where the ball goes. I just, we just, we have a plan and uh, you go back and you go through the reads and the ball goes to who it goes to, right? The play um, that uh, Aurora caught over the middle before the first half, you know, I mean, that play could have went to four, four other people, right? And then, but it went to him. And so you would be ready um, and have your eyes around. But just calling plays and formations and, and letting people line up and play ball, you know? Everybody understands that uh, the way that the, the pass game is, is set up, you know, it don't matter where you're at, you know, everybody knows the route tree based on the number they line up at. So. It was good. I mean, it, it cut out way more at practice than it did in the game. I don't think it cut out one time in the game. It cuts out at practice, you know, a lot. And so we were ready for, for everything when it came to communication. We had, we had a lot of systems set up, you know, because that's the problem. I, I hear other people not using it because they worry about it cutting out, right? And then we just have, we have some fail safes in place where if it cuts out, we know what to do. He knows where to go with his eyes, but he didn't have to use it. You know, we were, it was, the communication was good. And part of that probably, I told our group going into the game is, you know, I've never heard a crowd really loud when the opposing offense is executing. If you execute, they're probably not gonna be too loud. And so we executed pretty early, you know, the first drive, we took it down. So I do think that, you know, that executing helps with that. And then I wanted to ask you, just what was going through your mind on that touchdown with Jacoby Jordan just went out with him on the run? What were you thinking? I was thinking, don't get me out of field goal range. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and ultimately, um, you know, I thought that he would probably throw it away, but he extended enough and, you know, it was a, a decent throw in the back of the end zone. Right? You yeah. mentioned earlier in camp that you felt like there was some on the boat year over year for improving in yak. How did you feel like that went on Saturday for you? I think the stat was like 170, right, after contact. Was that right, or 174? That's I what I heard. That's 200, 200. Yeah. And I think part of that, too, is just, just really practicing on, you know, we have certain drills that we've done for 20 years that, like, you get up the field fast, right? And I think that's an element of the pass game that people overlook is like what happens when you catch the ball, right? A lot of people like go lateral and like ooze out of it. Like we focus hard on getting up the field fast. And I think just strain, you know, just being hard to tackle. I and mean, we sell that every day. It's like, look, just be hard to tackle. You know, don't, don't go down easy. And so, and our running backs are big physical guys, you know, and so, you know, I just, I just think that if you have the mentality of don't go down easy, then, then defense is struggle. I wanted to ask one more thing on the radio. The Alabama, Western Kentucky's radio has been out a couple of times, so Alabama had to, their coordinator had to come down. Yeah. Did you think about, with the radio, did you think about going to the box? This no, no, I didn't because of the, the way that we have everything in place. I don't really worry. If, if it cut out or theirs cut out, we would be perfectly fine. I mean, uh, we can we can get plays in and communicate. Uh, I like, and I've always liked throughout my whole career, of the communication on the sideline, interpersonal communication. I think it's important to to look at a guy in his eyes and have a conversation with him face to face. Now, um, you know, opinions matter. Like their opinions matter. So I like to like, hey. And now with the iPad, it makes it a little different. You can actually watch the last drive and last play. 
good or bad. And so, you know, it's, it, that's a refreshing deal. You know, the NFL has been using it for years, and now, you know, I'm like, damn, you know, we get, you know, usually you don't do that till Sunday, you know. <laughs> and so, but that, that's, a, that's a good part of what we're doing right now. But I do like the communication on the side. I like seeing the guy, you know, and, and being able to communicate with him when, when he comes off the field. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that's a big fun. game. Um, and Jordan Lyle took a lot of snaps. Where do you do the game with trust so fast? I mean, he's that way every day in practice, to be quite honest with you. He, he's had a great camp, and there was no doubt in my mind that, that, you know, when you talk about kids playing, especially young kids, it has everything to do with just trust, right? You got to trust that that kid is going to go out there and, and the, the situation's not going to be too big for him, you know, because for a freshman, that's a big, that's a big arena, that's a, that's a little different feel, right, than, than probably high school games that they've had. And so they can't be big eyed. You got to just trust that the comments will be there. With running backs, and more specifically, you worry about protection. You know, typically they've been handed the ball their whole life. Protection is where, you know, when they come in, you know, our protections are a little, a little more complicated than probably what he's been used to. And we switch protections. Like the center might switch it, Cam might switch it. So all of those guys have to be interconnected and they got to be dialed in. And if you miss one thing, then it's a blind slot, you know. So protection is where, you know, the biggest hurdle comes in a lot of times with a young running back. And he's a very cerebral kid, very calm, very smart, and he picked up on all that very, very quickly. So the trust level in him was very high. All right, Coach, you know, Xavier and Cam look like a pitcher and catcher out there. So what, how much better can this tandem get? And let alone the fact that you have a lot of wide receivers that you can go to. Yeah. These two here, obviously, it seems like their chemistry began to develop earlier. Now it seems to be carrying over and you have a full season left, left to go. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we're going to keep repping and, uh, and hopefully we keep getting better. And that's part of the process is not letting a little bit of success soften your mentality or, or differ your approach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And so, and that's what's been stressed here today. You know what I mean? Look, we won the game, great, move on, Monday's Monday, right? And so, we do have a lot of guys out there that we trust to make plays. And we're rotating more guys this year than we did last year because of that trust. And so, but I will say one thing about Seven is like, that dude showed up every Saturday since I've been here. You know, he shows up every day at practice, he did the same thing, and he makes plays. And so, players respect players. And that dude makes plays. And he makes plays in crucial situations. He makes plays when you need him. He's just there, you know? And so uh, I can't say enough about him and his mentality, but he is, he's a guy that's been extremely steady since I've been here. What's impressive the most piggybacking off that particular question is the fact that you have these players that never played together and have bought in and were able to have connections like that on the field on Saturday. You know, I mean, I, when Cam got here, and that was, you know, he understands. He's, he's been in a few places. He's played in a few systems. So he understands the level of connection specifically that receivers, uh, skilled guys, and quarterbacks have to have. And so those guys spent an enormous amount of time on Green Tree, you know, haunting that and just developing that. And so that's a testament to them and the work they put in and, and they meet together. Like in the summer, they're meeting together. They're in those meeting rooms together. They're out there throwing. It takes a long time to develop that rapport. And so, but when you have the right people um, and the right leadership, then time is, is not a problem, you know? Because really that's the biggest issue is like, you gotta give your time, right? Nobody wants to give their time. Well, when the goal matters enough to the, to the most important people, you'll give your time. Yeah, yeah. The well, there are a couple of success more. specifically to, as it relates to Cam Ward. Uh, how have you seen in terms of how he's wired in that way? Say that one more time. With Cam Ward handling success. Yeah, I mean, he's a pretty even kill guy. You know, I mean, he's he was the very first guy, to be honest with you, that that threw the message out there that look, man, look, enjoy it, but get over it quickly, right? And so he's played enough football and been in enough games where he knows that, look, it's no different than what I told our group. Yeah, I mean, everybody's praising you now. And go out and play bad and see how those people talk. You know, so you got to be somewhere in the middle in this deal. We, we live in seven-day increments in college football. And so those seven days went well. 
you know, and so if you want the next seven days to go well at the end, then prepare the same way. And so you really got to have short term memory and just move on. Good, bad, and different. Sam, there's obviously, you know, Mark Fletcher worked through a bunch of a couple of injuries uh, in the offseason to see him come back, uh, not really run with any trepidation, you know, fight through a pile and get a touchdown and stuff. Um, just put it, how did you see him progress through that, that rehab and recovery? And, you know, I know you're not going now, you know, how important is it to utilize him in the running game? Yeah, I mean, the dude's a stud, right? And so, and even more so, you know, his, even when he wasn't practicing, his leadership is unbelievable. He's just a great kid. And so, we sit, you sit here and a kid gets injured, you know, and he has surgery and they give you a timeline, right? Well, he blew that timeline out of the water because of how he's wired, his DNA, right? And so, it's a testament to him, really, of how quick he came back and I don't think anybody would have thought that he would have been ready for that game months ago. But, I mean, he lived down there in the training room and he did everything over and above to get back. And look, some people try to hide in that training room. He's trying to, that's awesome for that, for that kid. When Cam goes in the transfer portal, he, he, he's coming off like 500 the NFL is kind of shrugging their shoulders. Um, I'm sure you watched a ton of film that. Did the vision of what he could be with a better cast, a better plan, come to you right away? You know, I don't know about right away, but I did have a feeling of how he was wired, what he was made up of, you know, and I do know because, you know, I played quarterback, although it's hard to believe, but <laughs> quarterback's a very dependent position. You know, you gotta have certain things in place and you gotta have people no different than he was asking me about up front. Like, good luck playing at a high level without the five guys up front doing their job, right? Good luck doing your job without a guy like Restrepo working his ass off, getting open, right, and all the other receivers. And so there was an element of me understanding that, yeah, you know, I think that Cam had the mindset and talent of what I was looking for within our system, but I also knew that we were going to surround him with really good players. And so my, my goal to him was just to realize that, look, man, I'm not asking you to come in here and be Superman. I'm asking you to come in here and be a part of this deal. Be, be a big part of it, but be a part of it. And so, and that was the, the same thing going into the game. I told him, I said, look, trust your teammates. Just trust your teammates. You know, we got good players out there around you. Check the ball down when the ball gets checked down. And he did. We threw it to the running back in the flats a lot. I said, you trust your teammates and take care of the football and, and play smart football. I said, we'll, we'll win the game. We'll win it by a few. And so, and he does. I mean, he understands that he's surrounded by talented dudes, and he's going to trust them. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Dawson. And by the way, you know, how many Canes fans were there was amazing, right? You look up in the crowd, and everybody talked about how many tickets we got. I don't know how many were there, but I appreciate those guys. Appreciate it.